Joining me now with his outlook is Lazard CEO of financial advisory, Peter Orzag, who really is the perfect guest right now to talk to because you advised on the First Republic deal that didn't happen before the government stepped in. You have been in the government during Too Big to Fail and, of course, you know, at the OMB and worked with Treasury. So what do you think is happening today? I think the problem right now is we have Deutsche Bank-like attacks on a bunch of regional banks. So you short the uh, stock, try to create a, a, a bunch of noise. And the, the key thing, the reason that Deutsche Bank survived was the deposit base stayed in place. And the key question here is, will those deposits stay in place at the regional banks? So there are lots of things that can be done from avoiding, you know, closing the barn door at the wrong moment with regard to what the regulators do, to providing more assurance on uh, uninsured deposits, because that's what would help keep the deposit base solid. So a lot of people are, are looking at, as Leslie reported, the deal that we got from the FDIC and JP Morgan didn't see a systemic risk exemption and, and did see, you know, shareholders get hit hard on the back of this deal. Do you see, do you draw conclusions about that deal as it relates to the future of regional banks in this country? Well, I think any bank failure has the risk of rattling confidence. And when the underlying business model uh, questions about, you know, what is the future of regional and community banks uh, intersect with concerns about the interest rate marks, the deposit base, and now increasing questions about the credit quality, especially in commercial real estate. So if we had, you know, uh, there's academic research suggesting if we had uh, a 10 percent default rate on commercial real estate loans, you're talking about something like uh, another 500 banks that would face significant pressure. So I know you can't talk about your work with First Republic advising them before the, before the FDIC stepped in, but what about the deal with J.P. Morgan? What did you think of how that panned out? Uh, you know, without going into too many details, I think uh, relative to what a lot of people expected, the cost to the FDIC was probably smaller than uh, what it could have been, uh, in part because J.P. Morgan gave up its $5 billion deposit and in part because J.P. Morgan made the $10.6 billion payment to uh, the FDIC. But again, looking forward, I think the, the big question is, you know, we've got a lot of other regional and community banks out there, and what is the macroeconomic consequences, the credit crunch uh, implications of what is happening, and frankly, what should the Fed do in response? And the answer, you think, is they should have paused how many meetings ago? Uh, too many. <laughs> um, uh, but that's all water under the bridge, and the question becomes, do what, do they, they do what do they do now? And again, we saw uh, job openings come down significantly. They're down by more than one and a half million. Uh, I, I believe the Fed has time to pause. Let's see how this regional and community bank credit crunch plays out. Inflationary expectations remain very, very well anchored. They have time to pause. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily done but they have time to pause and wait and see what happens. But you know what Powell says to that. We can't take that for granted, that inflation expectations are low and coming yeah. down. And inflation rates are coming down, but not fast enough. And there are pockets where it remains pretty sticky. I think the key to that is the inflation expectations part. And the fear is that somehow, if you just wait you know, a month or two too long, inflation expectations is like you fall off a cliff. That's not the way things work. Inflationary expectations gradually become unhinged. They don't happen. Uh, overnight, and so you would see that happening in real time. It's not. If it did start to happen, then the case for tightening would be uh, accentuated. But especially given what we were just discussing about the severe pressure that regional and community banks are under in the wake of these bank failures, I think it is folly for the Federal Reserve to keep its focus purely on price stability and not on financial stability.